Hey friends, my name's Georgie. The warmest of welcomes to the Just Breathe podcast where I'll be talking all things breathing to help empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your bodies and minds. In today's powerful conversation, I'll be chatting to Dr. Ila Manga. Dr. Ila is an integrative medical doctor, speaker, and writer. Her latest book being Breathe, Strategizing Energy in the Age of Burnout. Dr. Ila is committed to healing and bringing heart back into the art of medicine. She works with a methodology that supports the body's self-healing ability and that is underpinned by evidence-based principles of healing. She honours the inextricable connection between body, mind, heart and nature and through her consultations, talks, the facilitation of workshops, training, retreats and her writing, she presents a framework Work of understanding illness and health through the multi-dimensional lens of Western medicine, nature principles, neuroscience, and ancient wisdom traditions. I came away from my conversation with Dr. Ela feeling so empowered and inspired. We got talking about the powerful impact ancient techniques can have on Western medicine, the age of burnout, as well as how breathwork can serve as a really powerful foundation for optimal optimizing your health and well-being. Dr. Ela was also generous enough to share her personal journey into breathwork. I really, really hope you enjoy this conversation and gain as many insights as I did. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Just Breathe podcast. Let's keep on building that strong, breathing community. If you know someone you think would benefit from listening to this episode, do send it their way. The more people talking about the power of the breath, the better. All right, let's dive right in to today's powerful, powerful conversation. I really hope you enjoy it. This is episode 31 of Just Breathe with the Beyonce of Wellbeing, Dr. Ela Manga. Dr. Ila Manga, hello. It's such a joy to have you on the Just Breathe podcast. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. It's so wonderful to be talking with you today. Yes. yes, all the way from South Africa as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very excited to be having this conversation about uh, something that I feel so passionate about, you know, and really has taken me so deep into... Um, understanding myself and all of life even better. Uh, the breath has really been, um, I suppose, a calling, you know. Wow. And I'm very yeah. excited to be sharing uh, today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I first discovered you were just talking about uh, uh, before at the Embodiment Conference and later at the Breathing Festival, which was wonderfully hosted by Dan Brule. And of course, breath work, I really feel, is on the rise. It's it's getting more popular in the Western world uh, and in, in many different forms as well. Not just breath work is for yogis, but breath work in terms of uh, the medical profession in, in terms of not just alternative medicine. It's sort of eats meets wet meets west it is really starting to, I feel, truly happen in, in, in the modern world. And um, you seem to be a big part of that. So, you know, yeah. that's that's really exciting. But I'd love to sort of rewind and, and jump into how you discovered all of this. Or when did you find out that the breath was such a, a powerful sort of source um, of energy, of revitalization for us. Yeah. Well, I think the big shift for me as a medical practitioner came about five years, well, I suppose not even five years, maybe two or three years into my uh, work as a GP when I yeah. realized that the paradigm in which I was trained uh, didn't quite resonate for me. And it was important for me to empower patients with ways to support their own health and well-being. Yeah. And I suppose that, you know, that was the entry point into, I guess, a breath being a part of this new paradigm. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and, and I hadn't discovered breath in breath work in its pure form, right. uh, then, but already was thinking about breath as a way of being. And up to then, my experience of breath work was through my yoga practice mm-hmm. and, you know, through the traditional pranayama practices and yeah. breath control. Yeah. And it was in 2011, actually, when Dan Brule came to South Africa to run a series of workshops. And he was actually using the wellness center where I had been practicing just outside Johannesburg mm. as the venue. And I curiously attended one of his talks right. and just felt very drawn to, uh, to what he was saying and very curious then to experience uh, his breathwork sessions and had a one-on-one session with him and have to say that that was the turning point for me. It really? completely changed my life. Um, it was nothing short of a divine experience, a deeply spiritual experience for me. And I felt that this was what I had been longing for, yearning for, yearning to feel, yearning to experience but I didn't know it. It was like such a powerful homecoming and a deep experience of, um, of, of love really, you know, Mm. and it was so transformative that I I suppose it just, I pulled me in very deeply from that moment. And I started to work with it more. I was behind this, and was passionate about bringing this to more people. Yeah. And it started to really uh, uh, experiment with bringing breath work into my practice as a modality, yeah. as a way for people to become more aware of what they were experiencing in their body, to listen more deeply to what their bodies were communicating them. Yeah. And to share a very empowering tool that they could take home and practically apply in the everyday life. And at that point, I'd become very interested in energy management and, and burnout yes. and our energy rhythms and cycles. And here was a modality that was completely supportive of uh, this, this way of um, supporting our energy. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even speaking of burnout, uh, we were saying before, how very much in the Western world, and and I certainly feel with my generation, I'm 25 um, at the moment, is we very much neglect our energy. And this was certainly my personal experience and how I discovered the power of the breath that I was neglecting my energy to try and be enough for this overstimulated world that no one will ever be good enough. There's too many perfections and ideals and you know patriarchal norms that are just unachievable um and it's actually not real it's no. unachievable because it's not <laughs> yeah it's not real and you know whether we're speaking aesthetically whether we're speaking of you know how much you can achieve what success even means nowadays you know it's crazy sometimes the expectation that is put on us as as humans and so energy management and energy healing I think possibly it could be the most important foundation. Energy relates to everything. We're not talking about a particular disease. We're not talking about cancer or diabetes or or whatever, as awful as all those things are. We're talking about energy, which is at the root, I suppose, of all of these things. Do, Do you find that the burnout actually, if people could address that, they could lower their risk of these chronic diseases that we see so much in today's world. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, burnout is really as a result of being locked in a state of adrenalized energy. Yeah. And that adrenalized energy is, it's useful, it's helpful, it's part of our physiological primal makeup. Right. It has a role, but it also is very addictive. So we very subconsciously Uh, live in a way that fuels this adrenalized energy and even in the way that we exercise even in the way that we are engaging with every aspect of life subconsciously it just keeps us on because you know it feels good initially you know it feels like we we're on we are alert we are productive we are excited it's fantastic you know initially Um, but it it behaves exactly as a drug does 
and it has the same effect on our system. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right. So we almost become addicted to our own adrenaline. Is it to our own dopamine as well? That sort of hit of, or the, yeah, ex- you know, like when you get it, even like a like on social media, you know, that addiction of, I must keep, right. keep putting things out there more, 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 right. when actually perhaps less is more is what would serve us. Absolutely. And so we develop these addictive neural pathways over time, you know, yeah. and these addictive neural pathways move us away from really feeling, really experiencing, and then yeah. the ability to respond to this. Wow. So we completely bypassing uh, the body's way of really communicating what its needs are. And so what's happening is that we have changed our baseline of operating to a highly charged state of adrenalized energy. I see the body is adapted to it, you mean? It's maladapted to it. Maladapted to it, right. And so is it, when you say it works like a drug, is it almost that you are numbing your own body's communications and callings? Absolutely. Wow. Yes. The way that we are wired as human beings, and you'll see this in every organism, is that we work on a rhythm of energy, a rhythm of energy that is fueled by this adrenalized kind of way of being, that's fueled by the stress hormones, but the way that we wire it is that we are meant to use this energy. It's given to us so that we can use it to channel it. Yes. You know? And traditionally, it was done in the form of movement. And, you know, when we're living out in nature, we naturally move to release it, to discharge it. Yes. Yeah. And what's happening now is that we don't have those natural mechanisms to discharge this adrenalized energy. So it stays trapped in the system. Yeah. We go into our mind to try and process it. And all it does is get trapped and fuels this, this experience, this physiological experience of anxiety. Wow. Wow. Yes. And this is why we're experiencing this epidemic of anxiety. At the Absolutely. Moment. Yes. So as a result, uh, our breathing pattern has shifted in response to this new baseline of adrenalized energy. Wow. Right. So we are breathing habitually now in a way that reflects this, which yes. means we, we're breathing uh, through our mouths. You know this through your work. Short, shallow, yes, Short, excess. Shallow, using accessory muscles. Yeah. The diaphragm is getting weaker right. and we are developing dysfunctional patterns of breathing unconsciously. Right, yeah, absolutely. And so this dysfunctional habit of breathing this unconscious dysfunctional habit of breathing is having an impact on every aspect of our being yeah it's yeah. impacting the rhythm of our hearts it's impacting the function of our digestive system because we know that with every movement of the diaphragm we're massaging every organ of the digestive system the yeah. heart is being massaged with every breath that we take yeah you know so we are we are not optimizing our breath at all when our our diaphragm is is weak and and not being used the way it should be and we're not getting the best of every breath that we take yes absolutely and and this is leading then to anxiety just from the way that we are breathing habitually breathing it's feeding the cycle of anxiety right Right. And if we ignore that, that root cause of the dysfunctional breathing, which I suppose there's even a deeper root cause in terms of the way you are living your life, right. the environment you are surrounding yourself with, that all stimulates uh, that over breathing, I suppose, that throws off the nervous system that leaves you locked in this adrenalized state. I'm curious, in, in women, that must have a huge effect on the menstrual cycle and the reproductive system as, as well. Absolutely. You know, and when we talk about energy management, uh, you know, the fundamental principle is living in alignment with our natural rhythms and cycles. Yeah. And we have many of them. Okay. So the breath is a natural rhythm and cycle. Our heart yeah. rate is a rhythm and cycle. Uh, you know, we have circadian rhythms. We have our um, menstrual rhythm. Yeah. And we are 
metabolically, physiologically, emotionally, energetically different in every part of our menstrual cycle. Wow, yeah, yeah. So in a patriarchal society that places this ideal on a perfect way of being, for, for example, intermittent fasting or yeah. a paleo diet or whatever mm, it is. Vegan or whatever. It's, it's yeah. very geared to a um, male physiology, which is completely <laughs> different. Yeah, yeah, completely to the way that we function as women. And so it's really quite a mind shift to, to really start to firstly acknowledge that we are different in every part of the cycle, mm -hmm. you know, in the follicular phase, in the ovulation phase, in the premenstrual phase, in the menstrual phase, our, the needs of our body are different. Yeah. And when we can wake up to that and respond so that we are supporting what our body's needs are in each of those parts of the cycle. It's, it's really profound. I mean, I've started to notice this in myself now that, you know, when I'm in my premenstrual phase, my body wants to move differently. Mm. It doesn't want to move in a very energetic way that I would normally feel, um, you know, connected to when I'm in my ovulation phase, which is a more, high intensity yeah. a very kind of um let's get going let's yes, get out creative yeah. creative kind of you know feeling yeah and uh, and so when we can learn to adapt and respond to these rhythms and cycles it's it's a very important part of healing and getting back to our natural rhythms and cycles again yeah yeah it's almost like connecting back to our our own nature within us i suppose i i've been doing a lot of uh looking into the the menstrual cycle myself as well and i love how many people like Maisie hill refer to the different stages as seasons you know um mm. that you are in your winter when you are on your period and you're menstruating that your ovulation mm. is your summer you want to get out mm. there and you know absolutely and um it makes so much sense and it, it's I love how you talk about it. I love also how, how previously you, you described your breathing experience as a homecoming. And I almost feel like that's very much, so much that keeps coming up in this conversation. And back with the menstrual cycle, it's coming home to the seasons of your body. And why would we be any different if, if the world, um, you know, operates on a, on a seasonal basis? Why would us humans assume that we can eat the same meal every, every uh, same night of the week, do the same activities exactly. and still be, still be in this perfect rhythm? And it, it's a complete misconception, I suppose, of the modern world. Absolutely. And, you know, we often speak of uh, ourselves as in relation to us uh, and nature. So yeah. We, yeah. we speak about it in, as if we are separate from it. And in fact, yeah. we are nature, we are nature. So if we are a nature, it means that we operate in accordance to natural rhythms and natural laws. Yes, yes. You know? And I think that part of this burnout epidemic is because we are living out of alignment with these natural rhythms that govern our system yeah i mean you when know? we think about global warming too i think the world is shouting at us just as much as we're shouting it it's like we're in a an, a huge argument with the planet where we need to make peace <laughs> yeah look after us uh look after well look after ourselves look after our planet as well though a little bit more mm -hmm. uh so that the planet will look after us and um yeah perhaps think about looking after ourselves more as well too come back to yeah. that nature you're so right yeah and you know what does that mean for our modern lives what does that mean for this new world that we find ourselves in that is governed by yeah, uh, yeah you know uh, our devices you know how oh my god and how can we actually use that in a very conscious and productive way mm. yeah in rhythm with ourselves i suppose yeah yeah which is not an easy thing to do no, no. I mean, how how can we 
you know utilize especially if we go on to the topic of phones and, and that's a constant stimuli even even the the noise of the text the bzzz, that straight away a rush of uh adrenaline cortisol right into your system as soon mm. it's like an alarm bell every two seconds going mm. off um perhaps is it more about um having autonomy that the phone doesn't control you you control that phone I think it's exactly. the other way around with a lot of people, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I find that happening in myself. You oh, know? Me too. And, and so one has to be so uh, conscious. It has to be a daily practice. Yeah. You know, a daily choice, a moment to moment choice. Right. Um, and, and yeah, back to this idea of moment to moment choices, you know, it goes back to what you were saying about it. it's not natural to have a fixed way of eating. Oh. you know, or a fixed exercise regime. And I think part of uh, what um, we're being invited to do now is to learn to be really adaptable and responsive as nature is. Yes. Moment to moment, day by day. Yes. Can we become more in tune with, okay, what is my body asking for today? Mm -hmm. You know, and I often have this little uh, a ritual where I go and in, into a kind of process where I feel into, okay, what is my body saying? So what is my BI? What is my body's intelligence saying uh -huh, today? Yes. You know, on a physical level, how do I want to move? What is my body craving to eat? Yes. What is the food that's going to love me back today? <laughs> and to do a little inventory, you know, what is my BI? And or to almost give myself a BI score. Yeah. And then to go, into, okay, oh, what is my mind's intelligence? So, so what is the... The quality of my thinking today? Am I feeling scattered and am I feeling focused? What is going to support my mind's intelligence mm. today? Yes. And or to score that so that I can respond to that. And then HI, what is my heart's intelligence? So what is happening on an emotional level today? Can I name what I'm feeling on an emotional level? Absolutely. And can I respond to that? You know, can I be okay just to feel sad today? Can I be okay to feel grief today yeah. without kind of wanting to jump to uh, a bypass, you know, a spiritual bypass of just jumping to a feeling that is good? Can I really drop into what I'm experiencing and respond to the energy of this emotion Absolutely. and my emotional life? Yes. So what, what we're talking about here is awareness exactly is is that and you know you know i i've this is um sort of you know we're coming up to around the 30th episode i've recorded of this podcast i haven't done it too long but almost every health and wellness practitioner i have spoken to about the root of optimizing your health or the you know the core of where do we start with really getting back in tune with our bodies it's always awareness anyone anyway it doesn't matter who I've spoken to dentists um sports people any they're all like it's just awareness it's just listening and we are just ignoring our bodies and for what to please someone or, or everyone else to adhere to this regime that even the nine to five that you hear right this regime mm -hmm. that we're supposed to do and how incredibly empowering I and mean, even just when you were saying there my your heart's intelligence uh, your mind's intelligence you know your body it's so incredibly empowering, um, I think, to actually say, no, this is what I need today and I'm going to do this for me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be one of these <laughs> zombie slaves that walks around sort of in the state of burnout, pleasing everyone else. I think it massively needs to change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hugely. Yeah. And even, you know, the topic of awareness brings us perfectly into something I was extremely inspired by um from your talk uh, on the embodiment festival which was about the art of breath work mm -hmm. and that framework that you use because even when we approach and take our first baby steps to say okay i really want to get back in touch with with my body I, I i want to go on this journey so maybe someone listening right now says right yeah i really i really want to do all this stuff taking your first step and, and looking how to can be quite overwhelming, right? There's, oh, yes. There's you know, so and as you work. say, 
so much breath work and the field has exploded and there's so oh, many yeah. beautiful teachers and beautiful methodologies <laughs> yeah. and practices yeah. and it can be quite confusing because you know Patrick McEwen is saying one thing mm. that we we you know we should breathe less Dan Brule is saying we should you know breathe in a, a more. rhythmic more <laughs> yeah. you know what is the right way to breathe here yeah you know? yeah and it can feel you know seemingly conflicting yeah but actually when we really look at the science we see that it it all makes sense mm. and there's a role and there's a purpose for every breathing practice and if we can understand the physiology behind these practices it really wakes us up to firstly the magic of the physical body mm. how our physical body is perfectly designed to facilitate the flow of breath mm. and how we can consciously engage in these practices in a very aware and empowering way when we understand the physio physiological impact of all of these practices yeah. so this has been what i have been working with in the last few years is to get people to understand the basic physiology behind breathing right. so that they can use these practices in a more conscious way. Yes. As a tool for energy management and self-regulation mm -hmm. in a very simple way. Yes. Yeah, and, it is and so the art of breathwork framework, it is simple. The Art of Breathwork uh, framework was created as a response to the need to simplify the vast spectrum of yeah. breathwork practices out there. Yeah. So we created this framework uh, uh, called ART, which is really an acronym for awareness, regulation, and transformation. Mm -hmm. So the A is the breath awareness for self-awareness. The R is breath regulation mm -hmm. for self-regulation and the T is transformative breathing practices for powerful healing and transformation and releasing trauma and accessing our true nature. Absolutely yeah so they're all right. Exactly. They're all brilliant in their own way but it's and they all have as, a role. as and when a little bit like uh, a dose almost I suppose of a, of a prescription it's like what what exactly. dose what don't be in your own doctor in terms of what dose do I need today of of course mm -hmm. I think awareness we can all agree probably is is a is a daily daily constant thing that's sort of the foundation but in terms of do I need to regulate or do I really want to shift some energy today right exactly and that's where all the, the self-regulation practices are really beautiful. And if you look at yeah. all the practices that from yoga, uh, from the conscious connected breathing, from, uh, you know, Wim Hof, uh, all the practices that are out there can be kind of uh, put into this category of either, uh, you know, calming the system. So relaxation techniques, mm. Uh, energizing techniques and then balancing techniques mm. you know and you know as you're rightly saying if you can wake up to what the body's experiencing you know what is my b-i-h-i-m-i what is my body saying what is my heart saying what is my mind saying how am i experiencing energy uh what is the the practice mm. that i can pick uh, to use that will be most supportive of perhaps releasing this adrenalized energy or containing do I need to contain my energy do I feel like I need to feel more control mm. is my feeling is my energy feeling more scattered that I need to actually use a um, focusing focus, yeah, box breathing kind of box breathing or coherent breathing or yeah. alternate nostril breathing or do I need to use a more rhythmic cathartic uh, practice to release and discharge energy yeah yeah you know yeah. and maybe can i can i add on can can i can i start with a more cathartic practice and and then follow on with a more calming practice yeah. so we can get really creative and so that's why i love the word uh, art because it is a form of art yeah. you know we have the basic tools but once we have the basic tools we can get really creative mm. and we can make up our own practice 
yeah mixing your own medicine and yes. you know it's, it's so incredibly intelligent because you know a doctor and doctors are the most wonderful beings on the planet and I, I thank you know everyone and anyone that they exist but a doctor can only observe what they are observing from the outside in. They cannot see inside to a degree. Of course, we have incredible devices now and technology and medicine, but they can't listen like you can. They can't hear the rhythms of the body. They, only you can hear those, those communications of your body. Absolutely. And it's almost so it's like it, it really is down to you to, to you have, well, almost if I should maybe flip that, that it's not down to you, but the power is there, but only you have that power, no one else. So only you can use it. It's like a secret superpower that only you can use um, and no one else has access to, which is exciting, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It can also be scary because yes. we are so conditioned to hand over to somebody else that we think knows better. Oh, you know, yeah. so fix me. To Fix me, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fix it, fix me. Yeah, apps, a heart therapist, doctor, in, in every sense of heart, mm. head, uh, heart, head, body is, uh, there's, there's someone for all of that. And I think many people approach, you know, even personal trainers, give me the perfect body, dietitians, mm. what do I need to eat to be this? If I get this, if I do this, can I get this? And it's that uh, nature doesn't work mm. like that. And if we are nature, when are we going to wake up to the fact that we don't work like that? <laughs> it's yeah. a lifelong journey, not a tick system. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And that can be difficult to get our head around. You know? Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, because it's, it means taking responsibility. Yeah, you're right. Autonomy, yeah. autonomy. And uh, yeah. what would you say to someone um, who came to you and said, I don't know how I feel. I... I can't hear the messages of, of my own, of my own body. It can be difficult at first. Sometimes if you're asking that question for the first time, really saying, no, honestly, how do I feel? Not how do I think I feel? How do I feel? They're two very different things. Um, mm. And if you feel like you are shut off, you're so adrenalized that you are shut off from, you know, the deeper sensations of your own body where do we start there is it just sitting mm -hmm. with it or you know my approach is really practical and embodied mm. so I always begin with an embodied practice that connects breath and movement in a very gentle way right. and when we connect breath and movement in a soft rhythmic way the body responds to that. The body knows it. It's so familiar. It, it happens so quickly. It's yeah. quite incredible. Mm. So I just get people to sit in their chair and to rock their spine while they coordinate that wow. movement with their breathing, yeah. inhaling as they arch their back and exhaling as they round their back. Just to do that for two minutes, immediately the body knows, remembers, comes home yeah and is that quite an emotional experience for some it people can be it to really feel their body be. again absolutely man i can imagine absolutely. i can yeah. imagine and, yeah and to feel to experience relaxation sometimes for the very first time conscious relaxation is yes. such a foreign experience to so many people yes yes i agree and it's maybe the first time they felt relaxed as an adult exactly right wow yeah and and you know to be in the presence of someone who is dropping into this beautiful relaxation wow so moving yeah it's, uh, because healing can't happen when we are in that adrenalized state because our energy is outward mm. you know it's not a healing response so yeah. When we experience safety, when we perceive safety, we can drop into relaxation. We can't drop into relaxation if we don't perceive safety. So my work is often just to create that container of safety yeah. so that people feel okay to drop into relaxation. And yeah. then the healing mode automatically will come alive. Yeah, to, to let people know that it's safe, that, you know, and it's such a, a saddening thought that 
some people when they go home after work or you know they go home for their relaxation time that they're not actually relaxing at all you know mm -hmm. that people that are suffering from insomnia wondering why they can't sleep why their relationships are dysfunctional why their relationship with food is dysfunctional why everything in their lives seems not quite right but they're sort of pushing through anyway because it's just the way it is or the way it's supposed to be how beautiful to let people know that no 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 there's there's another way and there's a better way yeah yeah and also you know it, it's just to your point about what is relaxation actually you know i think we're very confused about what relaxation actually is <laughs> i agree actually you know? yeah so is it sitting in front of your tv and watching netflix is it you know um sitting with your friends and having a meal those are enjoyable experiences yes and and, and those are necessary and they're great they're part of you know a, a fun life but does it qualify as relaxation no drinking three bottles Just, of wine smoking yeah. 10 cigarettes <laughs> yeah no and, and and i think what really qualifies relaxation is where is your awareness yes absolutely you know where is your awareness and if your awareness is in your body and you are really experiencing the sensations in your body and your awareness is inwards then And, you know you're taking a step towards true relaxation yeah and when we can train that parasympathetic response yeah and the body drops into a, a state of stillness and the breathing response to that you know and the energy moves towards the digestive digestive system and we can feel that rumbling in our tummy yeah you know that is relaxation and that is what we need to start training back into our system now i often refer to this as a recovery loop so inserting these recovery loops consciously into our day and it doesn't have to be long you know it can be as simple as just a beautiful sigh of relief in between our um, our calls yeah. and between emails you know just taking a minute just to i don't know look up towards the sky and breathe in the expansiveness of the of the sky for example just yeah. moments of reconnection yeah is, go stand in the garden for five minutes and just drink yeah. a, a tea but with no device with, just with you and right tea yeah. and your because if, if you're there and and if it's, it's as well right so many of us we wake up and then you're it's there and mm. suddenly your energy it's out into the world you're, you're not giving anything back to yourself Mm -hmm. um and so it's no wonder actually we have so many autoimmune diseases that you know the the cause unknown right mm -hmm. where it's like i think we all know the cause is yeah. overstimulation and stress um yeah. but maybe yeah. that's too broad a term um perhaps uh so no, it's, it's fascinating yeah yeah um when you say broader term i think you know what we're referring to is a holding pattern that It's a holding pattern, a way of being. So, you know, we say stress, but actually what we're saying is that the stress neural pathway is connected to a habitual way of thinking, uh, a numbing, suppressing avoidance of emotion, a posture, a habitual posture that we hold, mm. a corresponding breathing pattern, a behavior. It is all part of a, a holding pattern or neural pathway that we are locked in yeah yeah that kills our state of creativity mm -hmm. of play right, right. of so, connection yeah so when we can become aware of what our holding pattern is right and you know it's not about breaking it it's always going to be there this is the thing about neural pathways and habits and addictions It's a groove in the body-mind system. It's like a path that we keep walking in a forest. You know, it's a trail that has been walked on over and over and over again. So we default to it, especially when we're under-resourced. We default right. to this old neural pathway. Okay, so it's always going to be there. But our capacity as human beings, 
as a creative being is that we have the ability to create new neural pathways. We are wired for this. Yes. So when we can engage in a new way of breathing, it links to a new way of thinking and feeling and a posture. Mm. And when we can repeat that over and over again, we are embedding a new neural pathway in the body-mind system. The old one is still there. And, you know, initially in the process of change, we move from one to the other and we kind of default or we, we kind of so-called relapse. But the new one is also still there. And eventually, the more we familiarize ourselves with this new neural pathway, the old one becomes uh, kind of the grass grows over it. Yeah, yeah, it becomes less useful, I suppose. Less useful. And and we start to um, kind of upgrade the software of our subconscious mind. Mm. How important is intention in terms of creating a new neural pathway um because of course to go on that process to really embody a new habit to embody a new even you know when i'm uh personal training people i i will say no 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 you are not someone who wants to run if someone said oh I, I, yeah i wish i could run and they said, no you're a runner you're a mover embody that you know you are someone that moves that's who you are it's not something you occasionally do um, how important is intention in terms of creating anything new in, in those neural yeah. pathways? Yeah, I think it's the beautiful connection between attention and intention. Intention, yeah. Yeah. So when we can hold our intention and use attention to move towards our intention, yeah. that's the process of healing, that's the process of change. And I think the word intention is really important because the process of change will not be sustained if we are holding an intention that is not truly uh, in alignment with what we believe, with our value systems. Right. So are we engaging with a exercise regime because someone has told us that we need to look a certain way, Mm. you know? So what is the belief system that is behind what we are making the choice to do? Yes. And so if we are, we are not personally aligned to why we are doing this, we won't be able to, to sustain the process of change. Yeah, if we don't have that emotional attachment, I suppose, mm-hmm. that's sort of what you're thinking. Right, yeah. Right. So, for example, if I want, if I have the intention that I want to do a daily yoga practice mm. because um, I want to look thinner, <laughs> for me, looking thinner is not the highest thing on my value systems. But if you say to me, I need to do yoga, I would want, I want to do yoga because I respect my the beautiful makeup of my physical body. And I am using this physical body as a vehicle to express consciousness. For me, that's going to align more mm-hmm. with my values. I'm going to, uh, you know, be more committed to that process when I am more aligned with the intention for me. Absolutely. And when, when you start from that, inner intention and aligning with your inner values and having that awareness I suppose to discover what those inner values are that's another Mm -hmm. process of awareness I suppose have you found in you and your patients that you begin to attract everything that will support that intention the the people the community the and everything it's bizarre isn't it things start to come into your life and you meet people that just come to hold your hand on that journey that you never expected to come along. Yes. And that's when we know we're starting to get into the flow of our lives, you know? So when we start to take responsibility for our health, it doesn't mean that we have to do it on our own. No. Then we start to attract the uh, the co-creators, the partners, our support, (laughs) you know, we don't have to do it on our own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and we shouldn't have to do it on our own because part of nature is that we are connected. Yeah, we're all connected. Absolutely. You know, we need that connection and we need community. 
And uh, so as much as, you know, COVID has kind of physically separated us, I feel that it's also connected us in a very profound way. I mean, the fact that we are having this conversation today. I know. You know, uh, it just, our connections across the globe have just really increased and deepened, which is really a beautiful thing. I agree. I agree. I think people, myself included, have, I don't want to say forced, it's the wrong word. That sounds, it's too associated with tension, but you know what I mean? uh, People have been given an opportunity, actually, is a better way of putting it, to Mm. listen to take space Mm -hmm. and listen to say hey you've got nowhere to be right now and you've actually got nothing to do but not at any fault of your own it's almost Mm -hmm. like nature is like hey I'm gonna take the blame but you take a couple months or you know a year to figure it out and to take some space and to come home to yourself and what a beautiful way to look at something that has caused so much fear, so much heartache, actually as something that could be also very much an opportunity for us to grow through the adversity um, yes. and connect, connect on a deeper level. That's huge. Uh, yes. That's huge. It was really interesting, actually, what you said just previously about um, to give our attention to something. We have to be in this in, aligned and in, in this healing state, of course, to to be aligned with these values and to accept this help that we attract to ourselves, we have to be open enough to accept help. (laughs) Ah, well, there's something else, isn't it? And that speaks to something else, which is another huge uh, aspect of healing, and that's vulnerability. Ah, yes, you're right. That's the word, vulnerability, being open to saying, yeah, okay, time for change, time for help. Yeah, and that it's okay to feel you know yeah it's and okay. to feel safe, we have to and wake up to uh feeling safe with our, our, our emotions and i think a lot of uh the pain that is caused in the world today or the harm that we do to ourselves is as a result of our inability to or our discomfort with our own emotional life and the landscape of our emotions and even when we talk about anxiety, you know, anxiety feels to me like a, like a go-to umbrella term. It's like all our emotions get dumped into this label of anxiety. I agree. When in fact, if we tease it out and we really look a little bit deeper, we'll realize that there's so much more here. Okay. There's fear and there's anger and there's sadness and there's grief, you know, and each of these emotions as a role it opens us up to something within ourselves Mm, yeah it deepens something within ourselves yeah you know grief for me is um is such a powerful beautiful experience of of vulnerability and being stripped away of our layers of ego so that we can touch grace yeah i believe that we in the when we in the the space of raw grief we the closest to grace that we'll ever be. Mm, that's beautiful. Something really beautiful about that. Yeah. You know, as Khalil Gibran says in The Prophet, the deeper that sorrow carves into our being, the more joy we can contain. Wow. No light without dark, I suppose. Wow. Right? So these emotions sculpt us. They, they, they turn us into art so that our being, our body becomes this form of art that supports the flow of life force through it yes you're so right i mean it's, it's, it is like a painting almost isn't it where yes. you, you'd never see the bright colors unless you put them on the dark background otherwise it would all just be bleh, a big blob yeah. of nothingness and that, to to see and to experience we have to go through both i suppose and be open and, and willing to that that experiencing both is there's no good or bad that it's all just experience that will move us forward yes yes yeah. yeah and i think you know the risk of engaging with spiritual practices and being spiritual oh yeah there's a lot of weight to that word <laughs> yeah you know what does that uh, even mean does it yeah. mean that We don't allow ourselves to feel pain, to feel grief, to feel anger. And so 
it, it becomes a, a, it can become a trap, you know, we can very easily start to spiritually bypass, mm. you know, oh, we, we feeling a little bit anxious today. So I'll just slap on an uh, affirmation, yeah. you know, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And affirmations are beautiful, powerful, but, you know, there's a step before that. <laughs> Just ang- ang- chronic anxiety and then I am positive. I am grounded, I am positive, right. I'm grounded, I am positive, I'm grounded, I am positive. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, you're not, honey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, you're so right. Slap on a, an affirmation, but it needs to be on a T-shirt. Um, absolutely. <laughs> So if we can just give ourselves a moment, yes, really just to feel into the sensations yes. in our body, you know, what is the thought that I'm having right now in relation to this sensation? What is the emotion that is connected? What is this holding pattern that I'm in? How can I make space for that? And how can I use my breath to make space for this? And then it's incredible how it naturally moves. Right then it's released now there's space and then we can start to change our breath we can add an affirmation then the, the affirmation feels more real it's embodied yeah it's embodied we're coming, we're exactly back to the framework now is yes. that if you slap on an affirmation which is that is a really funny term is you really are just skipping to transformation you've forgotten about awareness and regulation yeah right Absolutely. so you've completely you said spiritually bypassed you've you've skipped and um i suppose that's when we end up in a continuous loop of surface level layering of uh i'll, I'll just do this because it'll it make me feel better for 10 minutes and then the anxiety will return yeah and we can even use breathing you know we can slap on a a breathing that is just going to calm me down i'm feeling anxious right now so i'm just going to breathe in a way that's going to calm me down and all it does sometimes is push the energy of anxiety even deeper into our souls. Yeah. Okay. When the energy of anxiety just wants to be released. So can we allow that first yeah. before we kind of just plaster on a remedy? Because we can apply a breathing technique in the same, with the same mindset as a taking a pull. Yes. Yeah, we can yeah, say yeah. an affirmation with the same mindset of just taking a drug to numb suppress mm. you know so it's really interesting how we will use seemingly more conscious spiritual tools but in the same methodology or mindset as we as we do when we take a drug yeah you know? grab a glass of wine or some a right. bar or junk food or whatever yeah so you know i think the work is really embodiment and and awareness and the comfort or the the um, uh, the feeling more comfortable and safe in our vulnerability getting comfortable with the uncomfortable yeah absolutely. and to know that we are empowered to make the change yeah yeah and that and we have the support and the tools yeah so i was just going to say that we are supported and that because i suppose when when the 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 in your being when you feel completely alone and uh like no one understands what you're going through or no one uh sometimes when you're in a really dark place you can feel like no one has ever felt that way before ever and you're the only person in the world that feels like that and so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's a i i think of course i'm I'm just one person but i i i wonder from my experience from people I've spoken to, there is a point when you sit, you can sit in that vulnerability for just a moment and be with yourself and stop looking outside everywhere else for the fix and, and consider that the fix may be within yourself if you're willing to sit with it for a moment. Yes. There's so much power in that. And once you just take that step, all of the support in the world that you need will present itself you know, if you go, if you're willing, it's almost just a willingness to go on the journey, I suppose. And that with the willingness that some of that journey will, will be uncomfortable. Because mm-hmm. um, it can be 
really uncomfortable to face your demons. Like you said, you know, in, instead of bypassing and going, I'm just going to do a breathing exercise every morning, but then I'm going to go back to my really stressful job. Then I'm going to come home Jeez. to my toxic relationship mm -hmm. and eat, um, you know, uh, like eat in a really dysfunctional way, but it's okay because I do Wim Hof every single day, yes. you know, and it's <laughs> yes. like, it's not it. <laughs> um, and actually it's scary to consider that you may have to consider that leaving that toxic relationship may be the one thing that really elevates your life and gets you back in touch with yourself or leaving that job and being unemployed for a time because that wasn't serving you mm -hmm. things that are terrifying but um yeah that could be the best gift in the world obviously the thing we've been talking about is covid terrifying but a huge gift yes yeah yes oh amazing um i suppose to finish off where do you think you are going next with your teachings and practices are you going to write another book uh are you doing do you are you really excited to get out there when you can and speak in person to bigger groups um what's next for you yeah. number one and sort of in line with that what do you think is the future and your opinion of this east meets meets west concept do you think this is sort of the direction that's really going to serve the modern world is combining that ancient wisdom with the progressions that we've made mm, absolutely it's a big question sorry <laughs> No, it's a beautiful question and one that I have been asking my whole life. Well, in some way, I guess, mm. <laughs> you know, but more consciously in the last 10 years is, you know, what is ready to emerge yeah. in the world? What is ready to emerge in the world? And I think that there's a huge awakening. And for me, COVID has been the greatest gift because it has brought us home to what is most important. Yeah. It has brought us back to the breath and it has opened up questions for all of us mm. around what's most important. It's made us confront our ultimate fear of death. Yes. It's made us think about what it means that everything is temporary. You know, so what the Buddhists have been teaching for thousands of years. Yeah, impermanence. You know, how do we, in our modern world, because this is really in our face, we can't deny the fact that we might die tomorrow. What does that mean for the way that we live now? Mm. We can't deny that we're not in control. No. You know, but what does that mean for the, for the choices that we make in our everyday life? Yeah. yeah. In understanding the beautiful makeup of our body, what does it mean to respond to that in the world that is emerging right now? So I'm really excited about the universal principles of life mm -hmm. that are coming to the fore that have come to our awareness in the last year. Yeah. The whole world is experiencing these natural laws. Mm -hmm. And if we wake up to this, what a beautiful opportunity of awakening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. You know, so if we go back to the ancient wisdom uh, and the natural laws that we find in every sacred text, yeah. if we find in any, any indigenous wisdom system, these principles are here. Mm. If we go back to this and we wake up to these natural laws and we find ways to live in alignment with them, I think we have hope. Yeah to reclaim our place as part of nature. Yeah, wow, I agree. And, uh, you know, so where to next? I feel, um, I really am feeling like life is carrying me right now. So I'm res just responding yes. to, to what's coming my way, these beautiful conversations and connections with, 
incredible people all over the world. I'm really interested in connecting art and science and cosmology and mm. ancient wisdom traditions and anatomy and physiology and yeah. you know looking at these fractals that are part of the greater whole mm. and uh, so I am working on my next book at the moment yeah. which I'm very excited about and uh, so I suppose it's a way uh, what I'm writing about is understanding who we are, all the layers and the dimensions of who we are mm -hmm. and this journey of life and what healing really means. Yeah. So I know that feels very broad, but uh, yeah. No, I, no, I think it's, it's the ultimate question of awareness, right? Who am I? Yeah. And underneath it all, all of the masks, all of the things right. I, I try to be, you know, who actually am I? Yeah. Big question. Thank you so much, Dr. Ilamanga. I will say it, um, publicly because i've only said it privately but you 100 percent are the beyonce of um <laughs> the health and it. wellness world <laughs> you are i uh 100 percent wow. and i will write that song on the podcast um but yeah truly you're the beyonce of the health and wellness i need to work on the ending of that for you're the beyonce of something beyonce of i don't know beyonce of medicine maybe beyonce of you know we'll work on it um wow that's that's very kind and generous of you <laughs> welcome you're welcome and um, that should go on a t-shirt as well i'll have a whole collection soon um but yeah thank it's been such a pleasure chatting to you uh, thank you for this wonderful conversation i've, I've loved you. talking with you no it's been it's been an absolute joy so thank you mm -hmm.